hot off the heels of the Garmin FC9100 finite element analysis I did, I realized that there was a whole bunch of other things that I could now do finite element on um, with access to this academic license. So I figured following IQ squared is being kind of this interesting point. A lot of people may have kind of misinterpreted what I said. And what I really wanted to kind of highlight is that there are some inherent positives and negatives in all power meter designs, but because of the simplicity of the available instrumentation on pedals, there's very few variations. All right, so let's go through these quickly one by one. So with Garmin, you have this shaft that's installed inside the pedal and it has gauges on either side. We've seen this from the metric gear pictures that were originally released. Um, and it allows you to sense in the vertical, the direction and the fore and aft direction. And that means that however you install it, it has to figure out what percentage is axial and what percentage is tangential or torque. So the Garmin, is kind of, it's simple, it's kind of that ideal. When you press down on it, the gauge near the crank is going to see more strain than the gauge near the pedal. But relative to each other, you can always calculate what that force is. You can also figure out how far that force is away. But it's mainly important that no matter where that force is, it's consistent. Asioma does the same thing, but the gauges are on the outside. I believe. Um, it's hard to actually get pictures of the Asioma strain gauges and it's also hard to disassemble the whole unit. So we know that they're under the plastic bit, but they're fully epoxied in and you can't really get access to them. So same thing, uh, but gauges around the outside metal shaft, differential bending beam setup, can sense in two directions, has an algorithm to figure out what your installation angle is. The look, on the other hand, uses a shear gauge. And in a beam, shear is generally pretty constant. So the wherever you're putting your force is generally not a huge impact, but it will have actually, in practical world, uh, a little bit of an impact. B-Pro, just like Asioma, um, Varro's first tech, only had gauges on the top and the bottom. Um, Kind of like how look has it on the front and the back, but they're using a differential bending beam, so they're insensitive to lateral movement. But if you get the insulation angle wrong, eh, all bets are off. The accuracy starts getting thrown out the window. And IQ squared is using the same method, but instead of using a differential bending beam like this, they're using what's called a contraflexure beam. And I've talked a little bit about this, but essentially instead of it being um, proportional to the difference. It's still the difference of the gauges, but the difference is this, both of these are going up. They just go up at different rates. One goes up, one goes down, and the rates kind of ish the same. So all of these um, are actually really good designs from a mechanical perspective. What I would like to see though is um, that these top two, the, those designs and an improvement to the look, the 2012 look current SRM exact pedal um, kind of improved. And, and it's pretty simple to just set up another set of gauges on the other side and throw an algorithm on to back out um, your installation angle. Uh, it would really simplify this hardware um, and really make it competitive. Right now it's kind of in the, it's, you're going to actually see it's kind of in the same level of the IQ squared design. So let's take a look at the, the FEA on some of this stuff. You can see I've got four little simulations here. The top pedals are IQ squared and the bottom is a combination super pedal, I'll say. It's kind of the more the Asioma and the look, but its effects applies to uh, the Garmin Vector as well. Let's open the regular pedal first. So uh, I'm only going to show this in uh, one axis at a time. Um, so if we want to apply force vertically, um, 
we can do that and that's how they're set up so in the y direction but if we apply force in the z direction it's just like we rotated that pedal and kind of the same setup as before uh surface bodies have some magic commands some connections and some cool finite element meshing so i actually had some extra nodes available because i can go to i think 3500 um, so I refine the mesh around here so that we can get some of the stress riser stuff um, and it cleans it up nicer than uh, a low refinement rat mesh. Don't like these triangles, but it really doesn't matter for what we're doing. So what have I got set up here? Well, this is the area for the jam nut, area for the threads. We've got two gauges at the top uh, by apart. So what's going to happen is it's going to bend and uh, Top side is going to be tensile, bottom is going to be compressive, but this one is over here is going to be higher than this one over here. And shear, uh, we can actually do it in a couple of ways, um, but yeah, so I've rotated the gauge 45 degrees and we should be able to uh, just apply force, kind of the bearings sit around here. This is not perfectly accurate, but it should be good enough. So, uh, and that remote force is currently at 54 millimeters, about one millimeter off from, um, and I did that kind of intentionally because of the jam nut. So I don't actually know the exact dimensions. Most pedals are 53. Uh, but yeah, so what we'll actually see here, if we go through all the gauges, so this is a uh, top near for the Garmin Asioma. Uh, that's 103, 104 micro strain and 59. And then in, at the bottom, negative 103 in a bit, negative 59. So that's exactly as we expect. Now there are going to be variance in placement and such. Uh, with the look, what do we get? We get shear on its, well, first off I should show, uh, the local x-axis is the green line, or sorry, red line, and the local y is the green line. So we're going to have to go through each of those. Um, x, 97, 108, and then on the back side, 97, 108. Just so that you can kind of see, this is the, the strain throughout the whole thing. But if we just, uh, oh yeah, so this is the, the normal strain. So there should be nothing kind of in the mid plane. And if we zoom right in, oh, wrong keys. We probe that, yeah, you'll see positive of here, negative down here, and in the middle, kind of around the middle, gonna see, uh, Still not close to zero, but yeah, it's, I guess in all cases, it's the, the mesh isn't fine enough to actually get a lot to show that it's near zero in the middle. And the shear strain, this is what I was talking about. So shear is theoretically almost constant throughout here. And you'll see it's actually the same, but it changes a little bit as you, as you go. So our gauge um, kind of averages that out. And just to look at this so you can see, yeah, you know, you can, it's very, very symmetric, but the, the shear strain um, is, is not perfect. So, uh, and if we look at, we can actually just probe the shear strain directly and that gives 215, but how real gauge works is closer to this, which is a, a little bit off. So shear in the so solution coordinate of the X, Y. So it, it's a, it works a little differently. Let's check its sensitivity to movement. So let's 10 millimeters out. And you can see that the strain went up and the second one went up. And I actually, when we do the math, you'll see that they're pretty close. On the look, you'll see that they're just a little different. I'll show the math again at the end. But the interesting thing is what happens when we, I'm going to a different simulation. What happens when we rotate that force? So when we do that, we're going to get low strain, should theoretically be near zero, but again, mesh refinement and kind of averaging out. And yeah, it's, even though these are perfectly in the center, they're not coming up perfect, um, but they will, we'll actually see that they will pretty much perfectly cancel. So same with these, these ones, uh, the, the look gauges are, are just just about perfect but what we'll see is they have increased sensitivity to pedal offset so i'll summarize all that 
after the IQ squared analysis. So yeah, I, I actually designed this pedal um, just by taking their image on the website and scaling it to the right size and then redesigned it. And it's, it's probably pretty, pretty close. Exact same thing, surface bodies, access string gauges, magic commands that make them do nothing. Um, they're on the top and just like connect squared, nothing on the bottom. And however, I have adjusted material properties for this. So I've actually looked up um, a fatigue curve. It's not perfect, but should give a great, uh, a better idea because I'm going to actually look at the fatigue because it's the only pedal I'm actually concerned about fatigue on. So uh, pedal offsets, remote force. Uh, let's bring this back to, all oh, right. Uh, yeah, so dimensional scaling was a little bit imperfect here. So it may be offset a bit from this face. This may be more of the jam nut area than I expected, maybe about nine or 10 millimeters. Um, so I got the dimensions off a little, but we can still check the pedal offset. So we can, uh, not using that force, can delete it, fix support, remote. So, you know, your basic setup, force and support. Mesh, this is actually a pretty decent mesh for an automatic meshing and forcing it to quads. Only a couple of triangles. So we solve that. And Elnol triad showing the dimension, so X. So that's the only one we care about. And this is the strain in that uh, area. So the normal strain in the X. And you can actually, you can see how wherever it's over, it the, the peaks, and actually they, they actually shift off a little bit here. So I mean, if we look at the, the peaks, they're opposite. So we've got uh, compression here and tension over here. It's kind of interesting. So we look at one strain gauge, 308, 309 uh, micro strain in, uh, what's that one? Which was my force. Oh yeah, sorry. Huh. The elemental tries can flip, flip the orientation. So it's still in, um, it should be, because of the orientation, it's reading opposite. So yeah, uh, 308 in tension and 142 in compression. So that's actually going to give um, a pretty decent look at um, strain that's very high sensitivity. And if we adjust that force, move it, say, like we did before, 10 millimeters out, hit the correct solve button, what do we get? Well, 326, so that one went up, and that one now went uh, I have to check. I <laughs> can't remember two seconds ago. However, uh, because I put in those SN curves, it, it's really interesting. So I'm going to change this quickly. I'm going to change the force because this is uh, the static crank testing force normally. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is because we're all in the elastic domain. But for the SN curves, it, it's going to matter. And the actual requirement for ISO is actually only 60 kgs per pedal and it fully rotates. So it's fully reversed. So that's uh, around 600 newtons. And there's many different ways of dealing with fatigue. So that's when you kind of like you take your paper clip and you bend it back and forth and eventually it snaps even though you, you could do it one time. And it's only 100,000 cycles. And uh, with the SN curve I put in and that force and you know for a standard 4130 chromoly steel, there's no problem anywhere. I was quite surprised. I was really expecting to see failure near here. Not back here. This is, this is all nice and chunky. Um, but yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. Like there's, there's nothing really anywhere. Um, in fact, even if we go to like a, a million uh, cycles, it's, it's still pretty much fine. So, I mean, um, I just kind of grabbed an uh, SN curve. Um, so that's your cycles, uh, your, your strain, your fully reversed alternating strain to your number of cycles. Um, and this will be fully reversed strain loading in theory. And yeah, it's, it's fine. I was like super surprised. Um, when you we do that force in the opposite direction, so we're back to a static analysis now. Um, you know, you can see how there's a bit of wonkiness on the, the strain there laterally. Um, 
and actually I'm going to just change this back because since the pedal is rotating in the ISO test, uh, the fatigue results are also important here. So th theoretically, we could probably sum them, but yeah. Um, yep, still no concerns there. But yeah, uh, with the strain gauges, they're tiny. Like these are less than one microstrain. Like they're going to they're gonna sum up to one microstrain. And with that sensitivity we have, it's, it's not really a big deal. So, um, you know... Uh, a real kind of kudos. I mean, like they, if their dimensions are, you know, within a couple of millimeters of what I reversed out uh, from their, their marketing photos, it's actually pretty good. Like I'm, I'm impressed. You still have the jam nut problem, which I absolutely hate. And I feel is like your, your pain in the butt entry level stuff. Um, you should only be, you know, and at, but at this price point, like, ah, uh, it's, it's kind of legit, you know, they'll still have a few things like their slippering stuff. I don't like that. Um, but mechanically, it's pretty okay. What does all of this analysis actually mean? Well, none of them are sensitive to their perpendicular forces. So the designs that require a jam nut, so long as you can get really good angle installation accuracy, and that's kind of hampered by some of these asymmetric designs making it hard to figure out what is perpendicular, but you should be able to get pretty good results from that aspect. So error against your axial. Um, designs like Garmin and Asioma, as we showed, when you apply a force, there's actually two different ways of calibrating it. And it's actually kind of interesting because with a Wheatstone bridge, you have to subtract one gauge minus the other. And then the other half of the Wheatstone bridge, you can flip the gauges, so that allows you to flip the sign. But it's always one gauge minus another gauge. And because of that, Garmin can have a simple setup where it's either A minus B and C minus D, and that gives them one calibration factor, and it's not bad. It's way better than a single gauge setup, like a bending beam on this lateral beam. But it's not great. With plus or minus 10 millimeters of where your force is being put down, it's worth about 5%. That's not great. However, when we look at the FCC filing, you can actually see four analog pathways. And what that correlates to is um, the two axes, so we have to half it, and the two sets of gauges. So it's actually A minus C and B minus D, and then the same versions in the 90 degrees to that with two calibration factors. And when we do that 10 millimeter adjustment, it's only worth 0.1%. That's really interesting because when we can contrast it with the look SRM design that uses a shear gauge on the front and the back, again, insensitive to that when it's perpendicular, like into the board, but when you push down and you move it plus or minus 10 millimeters, it's actually 5%. It's very, very similar to the original design here. That's not great. In reality, things might be a bit less than that, but it does definitely have platform offset error. The really, really fascinating thing about this though is IQ squared. It's not the Garmin actual implementation, but it's actually only proving to have a lateral sensitivity of 1%, actually less than 1% per 10 millimeters of offset with that simple arrangement. And I was really surprised because this puts it you know, five times better than the look exact um, pedal design. So they've actually got something pretty good here. We saw that the fatigue results for your basic 4130 for the ISO results are definitely going to pass. So yeah, I'm, I'm rather impressed. It essentially puts the IQ squared above a look S SRM um, exact pedal, still below a Garmin and Asioma, but it's, it's really neat to see that such a simple, low-cost design, because they have to install two strain gauges here, eight or 16 here. Usually they'd be on the same carrier, so it's technically eight. But only one, because all four gauges are on the same carrier. So very low cost, um, definitely passing this. And, you know, from practical perspective, they be in this territory. So that's really kind of neat to see.